Hello students, this is Pail Ma'am here. It's very good to see that not just of our school but even the schools across the country are watching my videos and they are really liking it and they are subscribing to my channel and they are probably getting even benefited with this. So I'm really thankful to you. I wanted to say thanks to all the parents and all the children who have boosted the confidence in me to come out with something even better in the upcoming videos each time. And uh, are, if I look back to my old videos now like which I had posted two months back I can see like uh, the views have got increased or escalated to about 3000 views very happy to see that how my channel is progressing and I hope that this continues for long and your support is always there with me so with the blessings of the Almighty and with all your support, let us begin this video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and also press on the bell icon so that whenever I post videos related to the videos that I make, you will be able to get those first. Okay, so today's topic is insects and we are going to concentrate on the useful insects for this video. Insects are the largest group of animals on the earth. About 9,26,400 different species of insects have been described so far. They are found in almost everywhere on this planet. Most of us do not like insects because of their ugly appearances or sometimes due to the fear of being harmed by them. But there are many useful insects too, which actually improve the soil, pollinate the plants or kill off the nasty insects that harm plants. So today we are going to concentrate on the useful insects only in this video. Because good things should come first, right? Insects do not have bones. All insects have three pairs of legs, that is six legs. Many of them have two pairs of membranous wings that help them to fly. But these are not the like the usual wings that you see in the birds. So here is an example or a picture of a wing of an insect given so you can see how thin they are unlike the wings of the birds so wings of wings of birds have got feathers in them which makes them light and easy to fly but the wings of the insects are they are very thin and they are membranous now moving on with the pollination when insects sit on flowers pollen grains stick to their legs or wings and get transferred to another place. This process of shifting of pollen grains from, from one place to another is called pollination. So we have already studied about pollination in the video where we have discussed about the flowers and fruits. If you haven't watched that video, then please go to my channel, click on the video section and you will find that in my previous video. So here there is a picture given which clearly depicts the process of pollination where the insect when it sits on the flower, the pollen sticks to the body of the insect and when the same insect it flies and sits on another flower, then the pollen grains reach up to the stigma and brings about the process of pollination. So pollination is just the transfer of the pollen grains from one flower to another flower. Okay. Now insects like bee, ants and termites live in well organized colonies. They are that's why called as social insects. Like Similarly, like we human beings, we stay together and form colonies, right? We stay in colonies or in apartments or in the society. So we interact with each other. We are well connected with each other. We help out each other. That's why we are social animals. So same way these bees are so very social. They are helpful towards each other. That's why they are called 
social animals. Now let us move on to some of the useful insects around us. Okay, there, there are plenty of insects which are not easy to cover up under a single chapter. So we are just going to discuss a few over here. So the first is the honeybee. They build their hives on trees and roofs of old buildings. So even in your school you must have seen the beehives hanging and it really creates a mess. You cannot open the windows with the fear that they might sting you or they might bite you. So honey bees are usually attracted to sweet smelling flowers. Now since they are associated with honey making, so they are associated with collecting nectar. So they get easily attracted to the sweet smelling flowers. Such flowers produce a sweet liquid which is called as nectar. Honeybees suck nectar from flowers and carry it to the hive where they live. Now a bee hive consists of many six-sided chambers called combs. Honeybees store the nectar in these combs and the nectar changes into honey. If you are asked to draw a honeycomb, Okay, then you are going to draw this hexagonal structure. Hexagonal means it's a six-sided structure as you can see in the picture. So, if it is asked in the exam, then you will draw this six-sided figure. Now, the honey is collected from a beehive by lighting a fire under it. The heat and smoke drives the bees out of the hive. The honey collectors then remove the hive and collect the honey stored in it. Now let us watch a small video to understand several interesting facts about the bees. The social bees are bumblebees, honeybees and the Africanized honeybees. The most commonly used species to produce honey for human consumption. The solitary bees are carpenter bees, ground bees, digger bees, mining bees, leaf cutting and mason bees, sweat bees, plasterer bees, yellow faced bees. Bees carry venom in a sac attached to the stinger. And only female bees sting. And also, certain species of bees die immediately after stinging. Killer bees have been known to chase people for over a quarter mile once they get excited and aggressive. Bees also see colors, except the color red but it is their sense of smell which guides them to find food, which is nectar and pollen. A honeybee produces around 5 grams or a teaspoon of honey in a lifetime. The type of flowers they get the nectar from determines the flavor of the honey. The queen bee is the head of a hive and produces around 2,000 eggs per day. All the worker bees are females and are non-reproductive. They are primarily the homemakers of the bee family as their responsibilities include housekeeping, feeding the queen, the drones and the larvae, collecting the pollen and nectar and making the wax. The males called drones, do not have stingers and do not collect any food either. So we have understood that in a beehive, there are three types of bees commonly found, which are the drone, the queen and the worker bee. So there is only a single queen found in the bee colony and her job is to lay eggs and preside over the hive. The, the worker bees are all female. Their role is to collect food and water, 
care for the larvae and guard the hive so they are mostly engaged in the purpose of housekeeping means maintaining the hive and looking after the larvae the drone are only the males in the hive unlike the queen and the workers drones do not have stingers so the queen and the worker can sting you but the drones are the males which never sting okay silk moth we get silk from silk moths which grow on the mulberry leaves the silk moth secretes a liquid which changes into a fine thread so we are we have mostly seen our mothers wearing silk sarees right so have we ever thought that how was this actually silk obtained so these are obtained basically from these silk worms the silk worms are reared or the silk is collected from them and that's how the silk gets manufactured so here you can see a silk worm feeding on the mulberry leaf the moth weaves a cover around itself with its with this thread this cover is called a cocoon please remember this these cocoons are collected and the silk thread is obtained from them. so as you can see in the video over here a lady is sitting and she is holding a wooden a uh, stick and she is stirring a mixture now this mixture has got hot water or boiling water and in that the cocoons are present so these things you can see over here beaded like things so these are the cocoons have a closer look at this so these are the cocoons of the silkworm and when they are stirred in the boiling water the gum which is making these threads to stick they get separated and then this lady as you can see she is spinning the yarn over here okay means the thread is coming out she is extracting the thread from the cocoon and then she is spinning a yarn with that okay so this is how the silk thread is being extracted from the cocoon of the silk so moving on with the next insect which is the lac insect so lac insects usually grow on the banyan trees they secrete a semi solid substance called lac that's why they are called as lac insect because they secrete this lac so this is how the lac insect makes lac okay and it is found usually on the branches of this tree so you can see here there's the lac insect and it has produced the lac so very important over here the uses of lac this is mostly asked in the exams so please learn this memorize these uses okay so lac is used in making paints varnishes printing ink and it is also used for making bangles so this can be asked in the form of an answer or it can be asked in the form of a web chart okay so web chart i'm going to discuss when i give the question and answer moving on with the next insect which is the ladybird beetle so ladybird beetle you would have seen it it's very colorful tiny and it eats a large number of pests that are harmful for plants now pests are what they are the harmful creatures okay they harm the plants some way or the other so what this ladybird beetle does is it kills the pest which are harmful for the plants now some there may be some worms like if you often find your mother cutting the vegetables you would see that small worms are crawling okay so what these worms do they eat up the leaves they damage the plants so these ladybird beetle they destroy these pests they or they useful for the farmers because they prevent the pest from harming the leaves or the plants okay now there are very important two definitions or two terms given over here which is apiculture and sericulture 
So please remember this because this might be asked in the one word question, in the short question, fill in the blanks, match the following. So it's very important. So remember this. Okay. So rearing or breeding of honeybees for collection of honey is called epiculture. So collection of honey from honeybees is called as epiculture. And rearing of silk worms to get silk is called as sericulture. So remember these two terms, they are very important. Okay, so thank you for watching my video and as you always do, please do like, subscribe and press on the bell icon if you haven't till now.